We know that the FTX stuff has to come onto market. So really, it's a supply issue right now. It's a promise of future demand, but we haven't got it. I'm very positive on the last quarter of this year. I think it'll be volatile, let's say, until October, and then we should have a good run going through. And then I'm very positive on 2024. Now, none of these things will go in a straight line, but generally, the first year of crypto spring looks like this. It goes up a reasonable amount, but it's choppy and sloppy, and people don't really buy into the story. Then the next year of, of crypto is when spring turns into summer. We tend to have a good year, not ridiculous year, but a good year. And then the year after that, we tend to have a ridiculously good year. So that's generally how things have played out. I think that's based on a macro cycle. I think that's how it's going to play out this time. Everything's quiet right now. You know, we've got very little liquidity coming into the crypto market or the traditional markets. You know, we've got the central bank still tightening. So there's just less money around. So even you've seen that the positive narratives, and there's been a lot of positive news in crypto, hasn't really driven price. Because the other thing is, we're not bringing many new people in yet. And there's a lot of supply on the market from, you know, Mount Gox government stuff, FTX, and that just weighs on the market when there's no new people coming in. We're seeing it in traditional markets as well. It's just not a lot going on. It's kind of very summer feeling about it, drifting around, not that many people participating. Uh, you know, you can see it on Twitter, you can see it in other places, just engagement in the space is pretty low, but people have forgotten the space is up 50 to 100% this year. You know, it's very quick to forget in crypto, unless it's up 300%, we don't care. You know, so you have to take it, you know, crypto is still the best performing asset class in the world this year, but we kind of feel miserable about it because it's gone sideways or down down since April, let's say. So overall, my view is that the central bank is likely to start to see inflation falling and unemployment rising and economic growth slowing or staying slow. And so that means for the back end of the year, the more likely outcome is they stop raising rates. Okay, that's plus point number one. B, if the bond yields keep rising as they've been doing, they'll probably start quantitative tightening at some point. That'll be a plus number two. And then if inflation starts falling below 2%, which I think it will do towards the end of the year, they'll cut rates as well. So that's plus point number three. So that shifts the kind of liquidity cycle as it brings us into 2024. Now, 2024 is not only will we see, so all of my forward-looking stuff about inflation and unemployment, rents, those kind of things, they should continue to come lower. So that means the central bank now has the excuse to cut because they need to refinance all of this debt that they've got. And there's trillions of this stuff and they can't refinance it at five and a half percent. Just it's, it's mathematically impossible almost. So really what I think they're trying to do is, is make it so they overshoot to the downside so then they can cut and do the necessary things. Also 2024 is an interesting year because uh, it's an election year. Again, if we look at all of those, the Ripple case or the launch of the ETFs or the ETH futures ETF, none of those have been launched. So there's no actual new money coming in. So if you think of it as an economy, we're just still messing around with the same money in the economy. So we're still waiting for more investment to come in. So what we've done is sowed the seeds for the new investment, but the space hasn't got much capital to put in. You know, everyone's kind of fully invested in the space. You know, we kind of know the story. Yes, a bunch of people have stable coins and are sitting on cash, but, but generally speaking, we need new investors and none of that's happened yet. So then if we step back and say, well, who's the seller. And we know that the government have been selling the Mt. Gox stuff. We know that the FTX stuff has to come onto market. So really, it's a supply issue right now. Not It's a promise of future demand, but we haven't got it. So the market has to deal with all this supply. Now, I talk about this a lot. If we'd have launched a Bitcoin ETF last year, last October, there'd have been nobody buying it, right? So price needs to be positive and rising for people to want to buy it. And we haven't seen that yet, you know, not enough. So really, if they launch it tomorrow, you know, could you attract a billion dollars of RA assets? Fine, but the government and FTX are selling more than that and stuff. What we really need is, you know, let's say Bitcoin's trading at 40,000, looking strong, you launch an ETF. Okay, then we're talking, well, maybe 5 billion comes into the space. And if it goes up, then you get to 10 billion. And before you know it, it's real money into the space, fresh capital. But right now, I, I don't, it's not the biggest deal, but it will be as an on-ramp when the market picks up. When we're in crypto summer, we'll look back and go, bloody hell, there's a lot of money in that ETF. You've got to be pretty brave to take on the crypto space because if you actually look at it, it is ludicrously smart people. It's kind of the best of finance, the best of technology. You've got people with a mission. So you've got super, super smart people who are mission driven. So lawyers will go into the space to prove a point. Everybody will prove a point. Coinbase, Ripple, um, Grayscale, everybody. So as the SEC, you are not taking on some little small token, you know, some small project. You're taking on kind of the best of the best here. The space is very smart and very driven. So it doesn't surprise me they've taken the losses.
because these people aren't stupid. That's why the Uniswap thing came through as well. I mean, it's like, well, people built Uniswap. Very, very smart people built it. So it is decentralized and there is nobody to sue. That's the whole point of DeFi. So the point being is a lot of this stuff has been thought about in advance. So it makes me very optimistic of how many losses the SEC will take versus wins. They'll, they get wins against people who don't want to fight, like Kraken. They just don't have the money to fight them. But Coinbase, and you know, good on these people because somebody had to prove it through the courts and not via coercion. Don't get caught in a narrative of some small token because you feel like part of the community and you don't really know how it's going to do. Unless you really have true insight into demand, network activity, uh, the things that really drive value, just keep it simple. Keep it to the top five, something like that. Just don't overcomplicate. I see so many people on Twitter who are so, so entrenched into a token, they have no idea whether it's going to work or not. And it's like, you're in the biggest, one of the biggest trends of all time. Just don't f*** up. <laughs> just, just buy the basic stuff that you should buy and maybe have your degen money, 10% of your money on the side to say what an amazing trader you are. But don't miss the big picture because you will be so angry with yourself if you miss it. I think the Bitcoin halving is actually to do with the macro cycle. Um, it's the debt refi cycle that happened in 2008. In 2008, we had a great reset of debt. What happened is every central bank, major central bank around the world said, right, nobody needs to pay interest. Interest rates are zero. Okay, that was fascinating. Then they kind of agreed that nobody was going to pay off debts. So they just keep rolling them. And what they did is back in 2008, they all issued debt between three and five years. That kind of four year midpoint is the halving cycle because Bitcoin launched at the same time. So they're coincidental. Now, maybe it's one of the reasons Bitcoin you know, can outperform because of it. But really, the cycle is a macro cycle, which is really important for people to understand. But you can still use the Bitcoin halving cycle because it's the same timing. So it makes no difference. You don't have to over intellectualize it. It's just like, yeah, generally 2024 should be an up year unless something dramatically has changed. My strategy is I did most of my buying last year. I never sold a single thing. The idea was the journey I've learned since 2012, 13 was if your thesis is long term, stay with that. But then in these, if you think of that, that logarithmic trend is when we get these down cycles, the macro down cycle or the, the halving cycle, that's when you add and it compounds over time.